inspired by the Waltons movie, The Homecoming, we are going to make our own version of her applesauce bread. And definitely we have a very important homecoming along with that theme because my daughter-in-law, Delphia, is home for the holidays. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and she is going to help me bake this bread. Now, true confessions, she is a good baker and she bakes a lot more frequently than I do. I am not a good baker, but I blame it all on Stuart and Leah and the members <laughs> of my family who are constantly interrupting me as I bake. Does Johnny do that with you? No, he stays out of the kitchen. <laughs> he completely stays away. <laughs> okay, well, my mistake is the first thing every recipe, every baking recipe should say is get everyone out of the kitchen and, and all distractions removed because that's how you can kind of screw things up. So <laughs> this, is, this is, I guess, kind of a pretend baking show. Okay, so first of all, Delphia, let's make sure we have all of our ingredients, which I have, um, I have prepped mise en place. We have our things measured out and, and prepped here. So what is on our list? Okay, starting off, half a cup of brown sugar. Okay, I've got half a cup of brown sugar here. One and a half teaspoon cinnamon. One and a half teaspoon cinnamon. One large apple. One large apple. Actually, this is more than that, but Johnny already chopped that up a little bit earlier. Um, two thirds cup of granulated white sugar. Okay, the white sugar is already in here with how much butter? Half a cup of salted Half a cup butter. Of butter. Okay, so because I didn't want to get out my mixer, what I did was I just put the white sugar in here and then I zapped the two sticks of butter in the microwave so then we were able to make this really smooth without me having to get out my big heavy mixer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got those, check, check. Two eggs. Two eggs, okay, two. I've got two huevos. Okay. Um, two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Got that. One and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Got that. One and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Got that. One pinch of sea salt. Okay, and I've already pinched the salt <laughs> into the flour. <laughs> half a cup of milk. Half a cup of milk. Okay, got that. And that's it. Okay, so now tell me what we need to do. Okay, so first combine the brown sugar and cinnamon in a small bowl. Okay, so it looks and like I need to get out another small bowl. And by the way, you guys, these nesting bowls are, are great. So you can see that they're all of the same style. Do you have a set of these? Yes, but just three. Just three. three. Ones, I probably yeah. need to get you the whole set because they're wonderful. That sounds good. They're wonderful. <laughs> I won't say no. <laughs> well, okay, that's the theme for the holiday. Won't say no to that. Okay, so we're going to mix this okay. together. So this is the half a cup of brown sugar. Okay, and then how much cinnamon were we putting in here? It seems like I it think was all of it. Yeah, all of the cinnamon. One and, and a half it was teaspoons. one and a half teaspoons. Okay, so we're yeah. gonna put that in there. Okay. Now, when you bake, I know you are a chocolate lover. I know this about her. <laughs> do you bake normally a chocolate something? Or yes. what what do you like to bake? Usually I bake a my go-to is a chocolate olive oil cake. Ooh. Mm, it's a it's a favorite every time. Okay, so is mm -hmm. this a family recipe? Um, not yet. It could be. I'll share it with you. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes. So, okay. So this is funny. So Delphia and I, we are, we are both chocolate lovers, but I think my love of chocolate pales in comparison to yours, maybe. Yeah. I can have chocolate in the morning and at night. Yeah. And, and pre predominantly what? What kind dark of chocolate? chocolate. Dark, yeah, dark yeah. chocolate. Always dark chocolate. Um, so... We were discussing this. This is one of these things that I threw out to my family. So for years, and I can't remember when was the first time we made it together. We made uh, my favorite toffee candy. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. And you have made it several times. Yes, every almost every year since then. And she said that your family, how did they respond to the toffee candy? Well, they asked me for the recipe. <laughs> and you they... responded. Well, it's a secret family recipe. It's a secret family recipe. So the, <laughs> so the story of this, I shouldn't be talking about toffee as we're making applesauce cake, but this, the toffee candy, I think I've told you this before, was given to me, the recipe was given to me by my Italian friend, Anne Fife when I was in college. And we, we started making it. I made it every year. It's very special. It is very decadent. Um, 
and we made it every year. But she told me when she shared the recipe with me that I was not to share it with anyone but my family members. And I have pretty much kept that vow ever since then. Now, God rest her soul, Anne is gone. And I thought, well, maybe are you released? That's my question of the day. <laughs> are you released from that kind of vow that you make to someone after they have passed? Or do you still, Leah, what do you think? Do you still hold it sacrosanct? I don't know. They're out there somewhere watching <laughs> so, yeah, well, so at any rate, I threw the question out to Delphia and to Taylor, my other daughters-in-law, and I let them decide. And what was the decision? We're going to keep it a secret. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> well, because it is too good. It is too good. And if you're like me, and you've, have you made it for gifts or do you yes, just? Yes, I made it for gifts for my colleagues, for my family. Um, yeah. I had one colleague who finished everything at one go. This, this oh, oh, you're I kidding. Thought, yeah. <laughs> okay. So for some of you who don't know what Delphia does, can you give us a Cliff's Notes version of what you do in Singapore? Well, I'm just a humble civil servant. Uh, she's not a humble. So well, let's, she is humble. I am not humble. <laughs> and I'm her mother-in-law, and I'm allowed to not be humble. So she works for the Ministry of Singapore, and, and I asked how, it, as just kind of a short description of what you do, and you, you we, I asked you, could I call you a legal diplomat? And you said? Well, yes, a lawyer diplomat kind of describes the skills that I, I have at work. Well, mm -hmm. she's, she's very smart, way above my pay grade. Mm -hmm. she, she just, <laughs> and, and actually, you came here right after coming in from Rome. So it's a nice arrangement you have, but you travel a lot. So, so baking and home baked cookies are really important, I think, mm -hmm. for the homecoming, the Christmas homecoming. So, okay, I digress. <laughs> so let's, what do we do next? We have added the cinnamon to the brown sugar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we've removed the peel from the apple and chopped it. I, I'm actually not going to do that, and I'll tell you why, because I, the apples, and one of the reasons that we're making this is because I had so many apples as part of my holiday decor, and I wanted to use up those apples. They were not treated with anything, you know, they had no preservatives on them, but I didn't want them to go to waste. So that's why we are making this cake, but some of the, the peel on the outside was a little less than its best. Some of it had been punctured because I had them hanging off of a flower arrangement. So we're not gonna do the peel, but we have chopped up the apple into smaller bits. So we have done that and we've put them in a bowl and set aside. Then we have softened the butter and sugar. We've got that here. We did not use a stand mixer because I didn't want to get it out. So we just did this because I, I put the white sugar in here, the two things of butter and it was softened, softened and then it should be grainy um, and kind of chunky. Then to the same large bowl, we are going to what? Um, add the eggs. Oh, and I just spilled some of my. Okay, so we're going to put, like I say, this is, talk about embracing imperfection. Okay, or em embracing good enough. Okay, let's put that one in there. Teamwork. Teamwork. Okay, and then what else are we supposed to put in here? Um, vanilla extract. Vanilla extract. Okay, and then continue mixing. Okay. <laughs> Stuart thinks this is funny because what? he knows. I'm actually not a bad baker when I don't have a whole lot going on. And it's, yeah. and it's just me. Stuart knows that I have made stuff in the past that was pretty good. That's just so gross looking, but I bet you it tastes amazing. <laughs> well, I think this is the kind of gross taste. Okay, what do we do after this stage, after we're mixing in the eggs and the vanilla? So after that, add the flour. Okay. Grab that. You want to slowly add the flour, and then I'll start mixing it in. Okay. And, and I don't know... Add the flour, baking powder, and salt. So mm -hmm. it didn't tell us to mix the baking powder together. 
But I guess we could. But we could have, probably, but it didn't tell us to. So we're going to just add the rest of the flour then. Okay. It gets harder to... Yeah, it gets stuff. harder to turn. Okay. We'll go ahead and add the rest, and then let's go ahead and dump in all of that baking powder. Okay. Is the salt in here? And the salt I had already mixed okay. into the flour. Okay, so let's continue to do this, to whisk this together. And then what is going to be next? Next, add the milk. Add the milk. Okay, well, that will help. <laughs> that will help my arm. <laughs> my arm won't get so tired. And I'm sure all the people, you guys out there that are baking, I'm sure oh, you are. Right, yeah. you are, I'm sure you are just thinking, oh, for goodness sake, Linda. <laughs> I, can, I can help with that. They're probably laughing a little bit. It's okay. I, I do not profess, but I knew you guys would want to meet Delphia. Okay, so I'm using some of this Pam baking made with flour. It promises perfect release which could be an issue because I'm using this cute little, this cute little pan, it's Christmas, band, but it's got a lot of indentations. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, a lot of indentations, <laughs> and that can be kind of worrisome. Now the other reason, and, and true disclosure, the, um, the recipe says just to butter it, but I wanna use a little bit of flour, and this baking stuff comes with flour in it, because I have found that when you use any of these decorative loaf pans, it looks a lot better if there is some oh, kind of coloration differences on the top. And that's what the flour does. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Then what do we do, Delphia? Then we add half the batter in. Half the batter in, okay. Okay, so we're gonna add about half the batter. Does Johnny come in? when you're cooking some baking to, and to lick the... <laughs> Once in a while. Once in a while. Once in a while. I'll save this batter on the spoon for Stuart. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. You're so thoughtful. Okay. We are then yes. going to, in a greased nine by five loaf pan, half the batter with the chopped apples, followed by half of the brown sugar mix. Okay. And we did sprinkle these apples with a little bit of lemon juice and a little bit of cinnamon beforehand, just because, just because. Okay, that's about an apple's worth. And then it said, what did we say? Half of the brown sugar mixture? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna let you add about half of that. Okay. Let me this we'll switch. We have not practiced this, you guys. <laughs> so that's about half. Ooh, and that looks yummy. I'll spread it around a little bit. Okay, then we put the next half on. Is that what it says? I think we're going to do. Uh, repeat this layering one more time using mm -hmm. the remaining ingredients. Okay, so we're gonna put this on. It does help to have a sous chef. An extra pair of hands. An extra pair of hands, yes. I have to say, it smells divine, does it not? It smells good over here, for Christ's sake. So. Okay, now, Delphia, if you were entertaining and you were serving this in Singapore, what would you serve it with and to whom would you serve it? Probably, well, friends, family, I would serve it with vanilla ice cream. Ooh! Mm. I can't say no to that. It's a lot of very strong cinnamon smell, so it does. that would be nice. I love that. Okay, we're gonna, we don't waste not want not, but once I get done with this, Stuart, you can lick these spoons. <laughs> okay, so then we add just a little bit more of the apples. And then I'm gonna let you add and see, mm. the thing is that this is really probably what I should have done. This is one of these things 
And, and this is why I think baking takes practice. What we probably could have done, Delphia, and should have done, would be to start this off upside down, maybe put some of the brown sugar on top, because mm. this is not going to be the top. Mm. And this is the this is the first time we've made this. So whereas trial and error. Trial and error Sometimes good enough is good enough, not perfect. That's kind, of, that's kind of what this channel's all about. Sometimes good enough is just good enough. The importance is that we try. Exactly. The importance is that we try. And I, I know for certain, I know empirically, that anything we make, whether it turns out beautifully or not, will be consumed. <laughs> because it doesn't have to look beautiful. No. Not it doesn't right. have to look beautiful <laughs> to taste delicious. Okay, so we're going to put this in a 350 oven for about 45 to 55 minutes, just depending on how your oven cooks, whether it cooks hot or it cooks low. So what do you say? I'll open sure. the door and I'll let you do the honors. Okay. Like it's dun da da dun da dun, dun. <laughs> Okay, go. very good. So there you go. Come back and we'll see if it releases, if it has a pretty <laughs> pattern on it. And if it doesn't, I don't care because it will taste delicious with a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and especially because Aww. we have our family and we'll be consuming it together. Okay, so this is the part that always makes me nervous because if you look at the pan underneath, See, it's got this great motif on it, this great Christmas motif on it. I showed it to you before. Okay, but now it's the moment of, of I don't know, the moment of, re of reality. Is it gonna turn out or isn't it gonna turn out? I know it works with pumpkin bread, but whether or not it works for applesauce bread, I do not know. So here we go. And you know what? Okay, crowd, if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, <laughs> we are going to embrace imperfection because what's the book that we are talking about, Leah? You're putting me on the spot. The, yeah. Per ah. yeah. the Perfection Trap It'll by Thomas good. Curran. Good. Okay, I just remember it was about perfection. Embracing the so, power of good enough. Okay, so if this works, yay. If it doesn't, uh -huh. I bet you it will be consumed and it will be good enough. Repeat that title for him real quick since you have a microphone on. What was the title you said? Embracing the Power of Good Enough. Embracing the Power of Good Enough by Thomas we'll Curran. Okay, okay, so Ready? could I have a drum roll, please? Somebody get on the counter. <laughs> this is the drum roll. Here we go. This is where the reveal okay, is. Okay, first I'm going to do this. Okay, it's got to separate, huh? Yes, it's got to separate, and we just don't know if it's going to separate good enough, you know, because it's all about good enough. Okay, everybody hold your breath. Oh, so show them what it's kind of supposed to look like, because now they can really see okay, it. Okay, yeah, okay, can you see? Yeah, now they can really see it. Okay, that's what they got to do. Okay. <laughs> And that, this might be my question of the day. If it doesn't work, what did I do wrong? I followed the directions. I followed the directions and did everything it told me to do. Ouch, that's hot that's for one thing. Easy. Okay, that's I'm going to let the, you know what? Space. We're going to take a break. I'm going to let this cool just a little bit longer. <laughs> I thought it had cooled long enough. Okay. Um, we'll give it but maybe. Second. No, it's starting. Yeah, but maybe not. So we're going to take a break here. Everybody, the suspense, the suspense is, it, 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 I know, is it a flop or not? Flip or flop? We'll see you after the commercial break. Yes, there you go, Johnny. <laughs> So, this is just a candid moment. If I saw Johnny, Johnny, he has no deal with his arms. Eating this delicious, of this delicious cake. Um, 
But I was asking <laughs> Delphia, and first of all, let me just say that, of course, before we started filming this, Johnny was abusing me. He was making fun of me, wasn't he, Delphia? Because he thinks that's his job description is to make fun of us. Um, but the, this cake is absolutely delicious. But I want to ask you a little bit more. So I said, okay, who would you serve this to? How would you serve it? And you said to your family members. So what family members specifically, What uh, which family members would you be um, serving it to? And we should give them a shout out. Yes. So I would... Serve it to the family members who watch Linda's channel. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, so um, they don't get they don't get any cake unless they watch my channel. Exactly. Okay, I like so that. So that's an incentive. So Auntie Molly, Auntie Shirley, Auntie Eileen, and Mom. <laughs> This is for you. Should not to, not, to not you. your dad. Do we, do we need to give them like a secret code? <laughs> well, my dad, after watching this, I think he will. The he code will. is Ovaltine. <laughs> <laughs> Drink your Ovaltine. <laughs> Nobody gets it. That's a reference to that iconic movie, The Christmas Story. But truly, I hope you really do serve this to them. And I, I miss seeing your family. So please give them a big Merry Christmas hug from the Vodder family to yours all the way from Oklahoma City to Singapore. Well, thank, thank you, you for doing this. Aww. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> well, my little life luxuries this week are anticipatory. So I am anticipating some things I'll be doing in the new year. And one of them, even though I've been walking a lot over the holidays, I want to increase the number of steps I get in each day as part of a health, healthy lifestyle for 2024. And so there were a couple of things that I wanted to show you that I consider to be little life luxuries. One is something that I've had for a while, and it is this Lululemon. I can wear it when I'm walking. You can wear it when you when you jog. I, I just really basically use it as a side purse whenever I'm shopping in within the walking life to areas that are close by. But you can wear it as, um, what do you call it, Leah? What are the thing, a belly bag? Uh, fanny pack. Fanny pack. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Fanny pack. Boy, that's a retro <laughs> term. Uh, fanny pack, or usually Belly I wear it bag. over my shoulders like this. Now, this one I got a while ago, and it's Lululemon, which is kind of a name brand. I think it was maybe $38, which wasn't too much. I actually bought it because um, it was recommended to me by my daughter-in-law. But you can also get a dupe, which is just kind of a fake version of this. And we will put both links if you want the Lululemon or you want a duplicate because I'm not sure how many colors this comes in. You might want a different color. You might want something that's a little less expensive either for you or for a loved one. Now, this, I'm so excited about this because I've looked for this for a while. I cannot walk any distance at all, Stuart and Leah will tell you this, without <laughs> having a water bottle or having a Stuart. glass of water or something. I have to have water with me at all it's times. It's a good habit. It is a good <laughs> habit, but sometimes it can be a little inconvenient because when I'm out walking, I don't want a great big heavy water bottle to carry around or to really be hanging at, against uh, my side as I walk, clanking. And a lot of the thermal ones were a little too large for me. So I found this one. The brand is Mio, but it is a thermal bottle. M I I don't know if it's Mio or Mio, but I got it. I love its good looks. I can hang it from the side without it being prohibitively heavy. But what I really like about it, and this would make a great gift get. <laughs> Crift get. Boy, I've been too busy of a day. Gift kit. There we go. Um, for for someone who, well, who embraces a walking life. And so what I love about it is look how nicely it fits in here. And then I can also, you know, I can also carry my phone in here. I can carry a credit card, a debit card or whatever for when I want to do some shopping. If I, I've got a grocery store down the street. So a lot of times for me, I just walk to the grocery store to get my ingredients for whatever it is I'm cooking that night. So that is just a couple of things that I am really excited about that I'll be putting into heavy rotation once the calendar changes. And I especially love this little bottle. I, it might come in different colors, I'm not sure, but I wanted the black on black because it is tone on tone December. Now, the other thing, you guys have been so sweet 
um, and have commented that she liked my hair lately. And it's probably because Leah showed me kind of how to make little, little rotary curls. I call them rotary curls on the side of my head. And you guys have been sweet about commenting about that and why uh, I have been able to do them. And heretofore, I could not is because I got myself a new um, hair, what are these called? Flat irons. Flat irons. Gosh, <laughs> or, straight, just, or a straightener. Or, or a straightener. straightener. My words are just, <laughs> um, just not flowing easily Pretty today. Abnormal. Pretty abnormal. Well, I don't it's know. It's been a lot popping in around I, here. here that, yeah, if you guys only knew how busy this morning has been and how many people have been in and out. So this is a wonderful flat iron. It's Lange. Am I pronouncing that right? I or Lang, so. L-A-N-G-E, I believe it's Lange. And I really like it. I don't, I think it might still be on sale. I'm yeah. not sure. I've had mine for years and it's still kicking. So. And it's still kicking, okay. Well, mine is still kicking after having it for about three weeks. <laughs> so I really like it. Um, I don't, and I think it's good about protecting your hair mm -hmm. if you've got dry and brittle hair. So. If you, if yours, this is one of these things that often have to be replaced because it will start damaging your hair. So if you are in need of a new curling iron, then treat yourself to this little life luxury. And of course, we'll put all of the links below. Now my last little life luxury is kind of a big luxury item. So I asked for this for my birthday and I got it, but it just arrived. And I wanted a more luxurious chair to sit in in the public bathroom because I have find sometimes I meditate in here it's hard to get because the cottage is kind of an open floor plan and sometimes it's hard to find a place to get away and I can do that in the public bathroom <laughs> and I think it's looking for privacy looking for privacy in the public bathroom so I can close off the doors I can play some quiet music in here and I can meditate and I wanted a chair that would be a little bit more comfortable to meditate in and so I found this I love I love the way it looks because I think it so matches the aesthetic of the bathroom. I think it looks really great. It's got kind of a Bali vibe. Leah squealed when she saw it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and we will put a link below. It's got a nice cushiony seat to it. So let me just move out of the way so Stuart can show it to you. Let the chair have its moment. Yes, let the chair have its moment. I love the back. I love the meshing on the back. I love the fact that it's it's rattan and it's got that kind of Indo-Asian look that oh, I really... Yeah. The that black I, and brown looks really cool. Yeah, the black and brown looks really great and I think it kind of echoes the vibe that I've got with the gallery wall. So um, from my chair in the public bathroom to your ears, there are my little life luxuries for this signature style Saturday. Well, I'm just here enjoying some of this beautiful apple cake and some hot tea with our Monocora honey. Um, we are all loving this honey. It's full of antioxidants. It's full of prebiotics. It's so good for us during these winter seasons to keep us healthy. And we did hear some of you comment that it was a little bit pricey. So we worked with Monocora to get you all a better deal on this honey. So now you get um, a little bit more in the package, and we all think it is so worth the price. So go check it out if you haven't already. Hello. Hello, my friend. It is so a windy Oklahoma I know, day. I know, isn't it? How'd you get there. in with that? Uh, well, very carefully. Okay. Very, very delicate. How beautiful. I know, and I can see a perfect spot. I do. Right? I'll take it, it from you. Okay, thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you. Linda, this is Shannon Hartsock. Hi, Linda. Yes. So, nice so nice to meet you. Meet you. I have heard about you. you, yes, and I think everything was, was good information that John shared. Oh, well, great. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> okay, so I want to tell you guys a little bit more about Shannon momentarily. You guys know John. Um, I, well, what can I say about John? <laughs> <laughs> the infamous John Terman. But we are in a 1930s, 1940s hmm. older home today that we are going to take a tour of. It's a very, very special residence, and I'll tell you why shortly. But first of all, for all of those of you who wanted me at my cottage to turn the parlor into a dining room. Yes, that's right. And have the front <laughs> door that entered directly into the dining room. Well, you guys can scratch that itch here. Because, <laughs> because look, this is a beautiful dining 
room here. I we thought it turned out really well. It turned out just beautifully. Yeah. I, I love a fireplace in a dining yeah. room. Too bad it doesn't have wood in it. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, a faux fireplace. But you know but, what? We can get the mood. Yeah, we can. We can, we can be inspired by it. When the house was found, um, obviously, well, the woodwork was here, all this dark wood. The floors actually were really, really dark too and in really bad shape. We um, were able to redo those, thank goodness. Um, there was wallpaper, strange colors on the walls, all that. So all that's come down and we made it just a neutral palette. Okay. Um, and as you'll learn as we were walking through this, all this furniture has been, mostly all of it has been donated from um, people who no longer needed it. So we were trying to do something that we could pull all this together and make a good statement. So okay. both so, individuals, individuals and some, there's a, a group here in town called Focus on Home who Wonderful. helped. And Shannon, yes. tell a little more about that. Yeah. So they are a local nonprofit that we were able to partner with and they um, use repurposed furniture and they uh, donate it to families in need or businesses in need, that kind of thing. And so they were so helpful and they donated so many wonderful pieces to us and it really helped us tie it in together. Yeah. So well, it's, it's just wonderful. And, yeah. I, and I love this room. And Stuart, would you just talk a little bit? This is a fabulous staircase. Isn't that a cool case? Staircase. So I don't, I don't want to I don't want to tease our viewers anymore, but I did want them first to see what a really really special home this mm -hmm. is, and following along with what we do on my channel, and that is really trying to highlight older homes um, for families for uh, for. A lot of those that we've done are for some single people or whatever, mm -hmm. but in this case, it's for a very, very special, and I would call it a very special kind of family here. So okay. this is Shannon. She is the executive director of the Magdalene House. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, Shannon, your last name? Hartsock. Hartsock. Mm -hmm. okay, I wanted to make sure we yes. pronounced it correctly. So tell us a little bit about the mission of this house and the mission of Magdalene. Yeah, absolutely. So this home will serve as a residential treatment program for women recently released from incarceration or those who have suffered with abuse, substance abuse, trafficking, homelessness, those kinds of things. So they will be able to stay here for up to two years rent free while they complete the program and we will help them find jobs. We will help them get the treatment that they need. We will help them kind of just build a sense of community and sisterhood within each other. And um, after the two years they graduate, by that time they're employed, yeah. they have money saved, and uh, they're ready to start their new lives. Yeah, it's, 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 and it's a really beautiful setting, and it's in a wonderful location, I think, in the inner city mm -hmm. of Oklahoma City. So, John, uh, come join us over here and tell us a little bit, how did you get involved with this? Well, I had two client friends who sort of strong-armed me and said, John, you need to be involved <laughs> in this now. But one's a, a member of the board of this organization, and another was just helping them. And they asked me if I would do it. And of course I wanted to do something. And this is right up my alley, obviously. And it's really been a challenge to work with things that don't necessarily go together. And you know, it's not, um, it's not one of those places where we have carte blanche to go spend money. So it's been great to collect all this stuff. I, of course, in the field that I'm in, as I was selling furniture to people, I was like, okay, I know where your stuff can go. Yes. And so like this dining room table and chairs, for instance, came from a client in your neighborhood. Um, so um, it was great. And they were pleased to have, you know, nobody knows what to yeah, do with their stuff. Yeah, I think it feels so, so good, especially uh, around the holidays. It feels so good. So if people want to find out more about the Magdalene House or they want to donate or th their time. Mm -hmm. um, checks are TV, always good too. <laughs> or checks or, or whatever. Um, they don't discriminate against any kind of offer. <laughs> sure. you have, you have Absolutely to make. not. <laughs> so where do they go online and where in Oklahoma City? Yes. So um, www.magdalenokc.org. As it's, in Mary Magdalene. As in Mary Magdalene. Okay. Yes. It's our uh, website. Um, there's an option for uh, to donate. There's an option to sign up for our newsletter. And then there's an option to reach out to us. So um, you can do the contact us. It'll come directly to me if you're interested in volunteering or have any questions at all. Um, and I would be happy to get back with you. Yeah, so. it's, it's really a, a wonderful cause. And yes. I thank you for sharing it with thank us. Thank you so much. If you are looking for a wonderful cause to which you can maybe spend some charitable dollars, then I would really encourage end you guys. End of year giving. Yes, <laughs> end of year giving. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. throw in that little tax, <laughs> that, right. that little tax incentive. <laughs> um, but if you're looking for a really, really wonderful mission that mm -hmm. will bring comfort and joy to a lot of people then this is the place. So thank you so much, Absolutely. you guys. Thank you, thank you so for much by. for coming yeah. and touring. Appreciate it.
Well, one of the most fun things about having Leah as a member of our team is that we wear the same size yes. and we can lend each other lots of clothes and we have yes. um, <laughs> over over the past several months. The other reason I love it is because she puts a fresh eye on my wardrobe mm -hmm. and she comes up with unique combinations that I might not come up with. And I think that's just fun. It's so just fun. a fun thing to do. And periodically I will do the same with her. Yeah. So, okay. So give us a guide to my wardrobe for Colorado over the holidays. We're going to Denver. Leah is going to be me and she's going to be staying yes. at the cottage while I'm gone and, and you can run through the closet, through the closet the to more. come up with new <laughs> outfits for the new year. So give us a little guide on, on how you decided what pieces I needed to bring. Okay. Well, I love a capsule wardrobe. I am also an avid traveler and I actually traveled all last year in one tiny carry-on suitcase. So this is called a capsule wardrobe and it's all about picking pieces that you can mix and match. Linda's going to be hiking. You may be wanting to dress up a little bit, cozy on Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. So we took all of that into account and you can tell there's some, a lot of the same color pieces, but all of these we kind of started with three or four pants that we love that fit super well, and then pairing that with different sweaters that can all be mixed and matched. So you get a good base of outfits that you can dress up or dress down. You can wear a sweater with leggings or jeans or a nice, somewhere over here is that satin black skirt. <laughs> so you can dress things up and down. We have this cute quince outfit that she could wear with this puffer vest or without it. And then you just start accessorizing on top of that based on what you have room for, either in your suitcase or your car. Right. Um, and so I always start with some neutrals, black on black, some monochromatic, gray on grays, and then add pops of color with accessories. Because so, the monochrome thing, mm -hmm. the tone on tone, is what we're going for in yes. December. The other thing that I told her is that I have lots of heavy sweaters and vests and things that I, that really I haven't had an opportunity to wear because yeah. it's been so warm and if I can't wear them in Colorado I don't know when I'm going to be able to wear yeah. them this season and so since we're going to be driving I can I have a little bit more latitude yes. in the amount of clothing that I bring and I I I want to have fun and I want to dress up and go to special places. Plus, I have all four of my kiddos. So yes. I've got both of my sons and my daughters in law. We're going to be taking lots and lots yep. of pictures. And Leah has made me promise that I'll be doing an outfit yeah, of the day while she has I'm. To send at least me an outfit of the day. At least her an we outfit of the day. To, to, to demonstrate. <laughs> we just that, need to see all of these combinations that you can come up yeah, with. Yeah, this, this is my homework. Okay, so let's. I'm going to. I'm going to show, just point out a couple of pieces yes. that I really wanted her to style for me. And, and partly because some of these are thrifted. Ooh. So I don't know how long ago I got this great vest thrifted and I've already torn your outfit apart, but I bought this great faux fur vest love and I love this. You've paired it. This looks very like Audrey Hepburn. You know I love uh, Audrey Hepburn. Yes, <laughs> you do. And I just love this, like yeah. après ski yes. or something. You could literally wear this with leggings yes. or you could wear it with your satin skirt and dress it up with earrings you wear yes. your little beret like yeah. all of these can be mixed and right matched. right it's so it's just so fun and i need to start thinking that way a little bit a little bit your more blazer, yeah come over here and show texture. i'll let you show so this blazer just in case you want to dress it up a little bit um any of the outfits again i could even wear a bla oversized blazer with leggings like you can rock and anything this was thrifted and you could add even like these textures on each other, which Love sometimes that. you wouldn't think to do, but it kind of looks Ralph Lauren right there. It looks like. Ralph Lauren. And the other thing, it's the same application of garden design principles where you do layering, you do uh, texture on texture, different tonal yeah. qualities, some sparkly things, some matte things. Yep. So yes, it could be very, very you fun. Can mix it with tennies, you could wear your boots. All of this is all about versatile pieces that you can mix and match. And so. the important thing for me was that every piece that I am bringing, or at least all of the footwear has to be walkable. Mm -hmm. I really need to be yes. comfortable in them. So it, so there's not going to be any high heels for me, high mm -hmm. heels in the snow or anything like that. But I'm 
you know, I'm a hat person, so I will, I will definitely love love yeah. my my beanie that I've got going on. And then this was this was a pretty big purchase for me because I have lots of coats, but I don't have any. And most of my coats are thrifted, but I don't really have any long coats that I can wear when I wear dresses or mm -hmm. things like that. So I splurged and I got this from Banana Republic. I love it. And I love kind of the tone Look on. Look at this tone Yeah, the on tone, tone on tone. tone. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm sure I need to look Already, in the mirror to do this. So yeah, cheap. And I've got, I've got. Um, so we can see all of it, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah it well, looks so good. Well, and I've got gray gloves and I think it's just gonna be, it's just gonna be warm. It's all it very, so, very, very good. comfortable. Leah's even picked out some jewelry for me. Leah's all about of pop color. of color. So I've got my red Teddy Blake bag that you guys have seen before. My and if red you use tennis the shoes. Same pops of color. It makes it easier because even all the accessories can mix and match. Can add some flair to your, you know, grays and blacks that you're packing it's easily. Too, and the nice fun. thing is, yeah. you know, for me typically, I think the most prohibitive thing to bring is multiple pairs of shoes or mm -hmm. boots because that takes My up a lot of room. Part. So when you fly, that's an issue. Yeah. But since we're driving, it won't be an issue. Yeah, that and whole trunk full of shoes, that's how I'd be doing it. Yes, <laughs> and I finally, you know, I just, I am just so looking forward to it. And playing with things that I've already had, refreshing and kind of restoring and renovating my wardrobe all at once through the fresh eye. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So much fun.